Um, I've, I've read that before I came up here. What was there something specific that you or in there that we were looking at or talking about? Well, we were Ray talking has about his, the Latin man. The Latin yeah. Ray has his Latin missile. I think I'm don't I have a missile, but it, I haven't. It's maybe not a Latin one. What uh, Dominus Patri? But, but it uh, you know our worship. Nomen Patri Fili Spiritus Sancti. It was based basically off of the Catholic uh -huh. Mass, but there's so many differences as you look back yeah, on it yeah. now. And uh, okay, Latin and and English. Yeah. So they, but they almost always they spoke the Latin or. Well, when I was when I was uh, an older boy, everything was in Latin. They never ever. Uh, did the English Mass, and then, you know, when, uh, was it Pope John, the first one, uh, that they had the Vatican Council, and they decided that they would, the priest would face the, uh, the congregants, and the Mass would be said in their native language, so. so right, so they could understand it, which, yeah, it goes all the way back to the Reformation, to Luther and the, and the other yeah. reformers, what good does the worship do if the people don't can't even understand it? Yeah. Um, but then our church was tempted to try to hold on to German or or Dan Danish. 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 So some Lutherans were, had to be Danish or Norwegian or whatever. Mm -hmm. They thought they were. They were uh, the Missouri Synod. There were people in the Missouri Synod in the 1800s who were seriously afraid, up until World War One and World War Two, that if they stopped speaking German, that they would lose their Lutheran theology. You know, so so they ended up in the same situation as the Catholics. You know that, and it was originally called the German Lutheran Church of Missouri, Ohio, and and <laughs> Pennsylvania, and. You know, uh, and there were, and the reason we have an English district in our church is because when they decided they'd allow churches that didn't speak German, they they said, well, because normally we have these geographic, the the Wisconsin, North Wisconsin district and the Northwest district and the Texas district, but um, when but they all spoke German, so they said we'll have a district across the whole United States for the English speaking churches who can't speak German. But Read the, uh, the Confidia, yeah. which is our confession of oh. sins. The, okay, in the English. Do me justice, O God. Oh, wait, that's Psalm 90, 42, is that? No, Confidia. Is that? It's, it's about in the right place? Three or four pages into it. Oh, our confession. I confess to Almighty God, to Blessed Virgin. Mary, our ever, ever virgin, to Blessed Michael, the arch, archangel, to Blessed John the Baptist, to Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, and to all the saints, to, and to you, Father, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed. Okay, so we cut out a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the, they were all about praying to the saints. And to the blessed body. Oh, yeah. Right. And then strike your, your breast three times. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea mea culpa. culpa. <laughs> mea culpa. Through my fault, through my most grievous fault, uh, through my own fault. And and aren't we in our we don't use the service very often, but the Compline service actually uh, contains these words uh, in in the confession. But the music is hard. I don't I can't sing it, so um, it's uh, too Latin or something. But uh, in, for my own grievous fault, therefore I beseech, blessed Mary, and ever virgin, blessed Michael, and you will know, name them all again, and all the saints, and you, Father, to pray to the Lord our God for me. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgiving your sins, and bringing you to ever life everlasting. See, I, have, um, I have now, know all that by heart. By in Latin? Yeah. In, in Latin. And, well, then there's another petition for what forgiveness of sins. You join the Catholic Church, any of it? What's that? <laughs> what did she understand when she joined the Catholic Church? Well, by that time, uh, well, it was still pretty much Latin, wasn't it? Well, I took Latin in school. school that was yeah. amazing. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, so a Latin was okay for you. Um, the, so then there's a, the, after that confession, then there's a petition for remission of sins. You, did you say that too? Indulgentium, yeah. absolutum, um, grant us pardon and absolution and remission of our sins. And then a prayer for the purity. Take away our sins, O Lord. We speak to you that you may enter our pure minds with holy, the holy, holy through Christ our Lord. Um, and there, if he, in there is all the indulgences and how, how many, you know, ten years if you did this. And yeah. Five years if you did something. Else. And, and you still working on them? Huh? And then the <laughs> speech. <laughs> The, the priest at the end says, May you be blessed by him in whose honor you shall be consumed. Amen. So he never actually says the words, Your sins are forgiven. Or, unless you're maybe in, or in, a, in a private confession, then, then, you, then he would forgive your sins. I don't recall it was for your penance. You do these things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um... And then would they say, I forgive you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I mean, on movies and TV shows, maybe that's something that's been added since the 1960s. Um, I see that at the priests giving some absolution. And now for your penance, now go do these things. But, uh, but that could be something that was added you know, after Vatican II also. Um, but uh, so, yeah. Now, when, you, when they say the rosary, isn't a lot of that Hail Mary? Oh, yeah. It's, Mostly uh, Hail Mary. There's 50 Hail Marys. 53, in fact. <laughs> so you start off with the, uh, the Apostles' Creed. Yeah. That, and, and you got your, your thumb on the crucifix. And then you say, the, uh, Glory be to or, our Father. Uh -huh. And then Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. And then glory be to the Father, and then the first mystery, then you have the mysteries, the joyful mysteries, the, and you say that at the break of every decade. <laughs> and the joyful mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries, and the glorious mysteries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're all in here. And it keeps you busy for an hour or so. <laughs> Didn't you say you had to go to your grandmother's or your grandmother's? Well, boy, at 8 o'clock, you got out of grandma's house. Before, before 8 o'clock, otherwise it's too late. <laughs> Down on your knees, you went. Um, <laughs> Doesn't matter who you were, yeah, either. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, and, and, but then, as Luther says, when he would, went on his pilgrimage to Rome before the Reformation, and he thought he was going to go there and he was going to find forgiveness for his sins and doing these indulgences and things. And as a priest, he was saying a mass in one of the, one of the churches, you know, uh, to get extra indulgences off of his, you know, off his purgatory. And he was always constantly be hurrying along. And, you know, and the other priests would be saying the mass so fast you could barely understand what they were saying. You know, get it done and get out of there. And, and he's trying to be penitent and sorry and, you know, and, and think about the words. And, and they're like, hurry up, hurry up, brother. You're taking I, too long. Uh, Father Jonah was, let's get going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Father Connect, who I served mass for, he was more slow and methodical. Yeah. He's who I learned, uh, first served mass for was Father Connect. And then down in Clarkston, uh, Father Jonah, and then there, I, there was several different uh, assistant priests that, along the road that I served mass for over the years. And uh, mm -hmm. the hospital chaplain, the old man that was the hospital chaplain, he was about 80 or 90 years old, and he was the hospital chaplain in huh. Chihuahua. Yeah, that's probably a good kind of retirement job for a priest or a pastor. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, well, that's, thanks. Good, interesting stuff. So, we'll be doing our intro. It's in Latin. No? <laughs> uh, but um, the intro this week, Psalm 119, one, a section out of it, uh, verses 9 through 16. So, this is the second section, should be the second section, debate. So, 
Blessed are you, O Lord. Keep your statutes. Your statutes. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart. That I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare. All the just decrees of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight. As much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts. And fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. And will not forget your word. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. We pray the collect for this week. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith that, relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I uh, was, I was had the chapel service on from St. Louis Seminary, and they had a special procession. I didn't notice... Well, if, what there was tomorrow is uh, tomorrow is the feast of the purification, yeah. um, but maybe but usually Wednesday was there was there ch- um, uh, at the seminary at St. Louis was their communion day, so maybe they were cel- kind of celebrating that today on their regular communion day. Um, they'd have a little bit longer time set aside for chapel on Wednesdays, but uh, so. So uh, Lutherans do incense and processions, and we can do all of those sorts of things. You know, just uh, we just don't normally do it as much. But um, um, so Matthew five uh, from our gospel. We've been we've been in Matthew four and then five the last several weeks. Uh, so we're still in the Sermon on the Mount. And um, last week we read the Beatitudes as we do on uh, on All Saints Day. But um, so now we we continue on past the Beatitudes. Jesus continuing the same sermon. So so just think you know, think of him still sitting there on the mountainside in the grass on a rock or whatever. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, usually not too much grass there, but they had uh, they had animals and they had grew wheat and things, so there must have been a, a little bit. Um, so, uh, so Saint, so Jesus is, continues his teaching, beginning of verse thirteen. Uh, we'll just talk about this ver- verse first, verse thirteen. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has not, has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Okay, so what does this mean, salt of the earth? Um, and we hear that expression at times, right? These people are, these are the salt of the earth, right? Maybe maybe they don't say it as much as they used to, but <laughs> um, what is Jesus talking about? How are we salt of the earth? By doing his good works for him. I know that can't be right. Or what does salt do? What is its uses or purposes or um brings out the flavor. Right. It's it brings out the flavor and food. Yeah. It he does mention taste. Flavor taste flavor is one of the things. If salt loses its saltiness, can it be restored? Do, I didn't know you could it wouldn't lose its saltiness. How would salt lose its saltiness? Is that even a thing or is that just Jesus is just saying if, you know, if this ever happened. 
maybe with rock salt, if it got wet, dissolved all the sodium chloride, all the salt out of it, you'd be left with just rock instead of rock salt. I don't know if there's a, um, you can, now of course in their day, you couldn't go to the market and buy a can of Morton's, right? <laughs> Is that, that's the famous, most popular salt yeah. or something, right? Yeah, because it pours even when it rains. Even when it rains. <laughs> um, well, so here it says, uh, by their way of life, Jesus' disciples are to be used, are to be as useful as salt is. Mm-hmm. No, so, so part of it is taste, making the world a better place by mm -hmm. what we do, how we live. Um, you know, and if we were as, if we were as, wicked and evil, adultery and murder and, and stealing and lying and, and as, as the rest of the world around us, it would be even a worse place. Um, uh, you know, America can benefit from all the Christians in the country, even if the government is not Christian. You know, so, yeah. Um, so, uh, what's another use of salt besides just taste? Well, preserving food. Yeah. For what? Preserving food. Yeah. Preserving Cure. food. Cure. Could we be like a preservative on the earth as Christians? Most yeah. By speaking up for what's truth and what's right. Oh, yeah. um, being a little bit of a conscience for our neighbors, even if they don't believe in God, to to uh to uh well th that's those are good people and even though i don't believe in their god i will i will behave a little better you know because of them you know maybe um it, the uh jesus is some places he says when i ret when the son of man returns will he find faith on the earth or will it be completely you know worthless right so um salt as a preservative you know through our witness, uh, speaking God's word and truth in the world, even when they don't want to hear it, um, through our good works and our actions, we are also a preservative. We do both. Salt's also a healing agent. Healing, yeah. Uh, rubbing salt in the wound, are you? Well, <laughs> you know, you get a canker sore, you... Yes. Wash your mouth out with uh, I do. salt, salt, and peroxide. My mom taught me that when I was a, a young, and I do. When I, I, if, even if it's in the middle of the night, I can't sleep because I got a little sore. I go rub on that till it's bleeding, and then put a few grains of salt on it, and it clears up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it burns a bit. <laughs> but, <Please, yeah. laughs> but it, it does. It clears it up. up. I mean, it, it, they, canker sores do so not... You could, you could uh, uh, correlate that to sin. Yeah. And, and the salt of the earth is, can cure the sin. It can. Yeah, it can help cure the sin. Well, but we're not, we are not saved or forgiven by our good works. No. No, no it's only, we're only saved by Jesus. But, but for bringing the message of Jesus into the works, we can bring... Healing, forgiveness, restoration, you know, we can bring those things in. So, um, yeah, so in that way, we, another way we can be salt uh, of the, in the, to the earth. Um, but, uh, but thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Sounds like it's talking about snow plows, huh? Driving around, throwing salt on the road. <laughs> <laughs> But that's not such a bad thing. Even that's a useful, I mean, the salt is still go, go, going to a useful purpose. Um, but I'm glad we don't live in the Midwest. My parents' cars rust out in like 10 years. You know, they start getting holes and stuff in them. So I told them, you got to come buy a car out here. They're 20 years old and no rust, you know? So. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have any rust in my car, I don't think, and it's no. almost 20 years. No, we got, we've got Tanya's car is 25 years old. Uh, we've got two cars that are 20 years old or around 21, 22 years old, you know, and 
no rust anywhere. I mean, there's always a few problems when you get to old circuits and stuff. Your things wear, still wear out, but yeah. but no rust. So, uh, trampled under people's feet. Okay. Um, so, 14 then. We've got a couple more verses here. The next little section. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Put but on a stand and get and it gives light to all in the house. Lord, go ahead. Sixteen. Oh, okay. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Okay, this little gospel light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> shine all over the neighborhood. I'm gonna let yeah. it shine. So. <laughs> You guys don't learn those. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is the first question? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, what is, light of the world. What is Jesus telling us here? Is this the same kind of thing as salt, or is it something different? Well, isn't it just kind of like people see what, how you live and... Mm -hmm. And that's your shining light on. Mm-hmm. If you live just like everybody else, how will they know? How they will will they know you're Christians? Well, and last time we said, well, last Sunday we sang that they'll know we're Christians by our love, by our love. And that morning when I was getting in the shower, that song started in my head, and now they come up here and see that I. Yeah, believe it. <laughs> and you're not even on you're not even on Facebook and YouTube, so no, you didn't no, see that I, I put that. How are our good work? How how are we light in the world? Or is there anything else to add to that? Is it different than being salt? Um, well, cause, I, think, I think it's pretty close. Mm-hmm. Because Jesus also called himself the light of the world, right? Light shines in the darkness, but men preferred darkness. Uh, I mean, that's not just uh, in John, but uh, light of the world. The shining is the real job of believing or teaching by which we also help others to believe. Yeah, and, and he specifically mentions good works. How do our good yeah, works... Good works are meant to lead others to glorify our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Not to bring praise to the one who does them. Right. Leading people to worship the true God is the whole purpose. So what, good work. what does that mean? When somebody comes up and says, Wow, you're such a good person. You know, we say... Oh yes, thank you for noticing. <laughs> no, not so much. Well, in some ways, in our world today, because this, even though not everybody in our country is a Christian person, but still a majority have been Christian or <laughs> some sort of Christian, uh, we still behave a lot like a Christian nation. You know, but it's getting worse. You know, not less and less. Um, but. Um, so, so a lot of people, you know, Christians, decided that we should do our good works through the government, you know, or or some or somewhere else. Well, the problem is that doesn't give honor and glory to God, does it? You know, now people think the government is where we should go for good works, and the government is who should provide all good things, and the government decides right and wrong, and the government, you know, becomes God, you know, rather than God the Father in heaven above the government. Um, you know, and, and I saw a story, a news story about this this week. There's some guy, businessman who has enough money, he decided to share it to, I, to help a thousand people who had some eye troubles with treatments, maybe glaucoma or cataracts, so that they could get their vision back. And some people were actually complaining that he was doing this without going through the government so people would look to him for help rather than to the government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how twisted our world has become, you know, as we get further and further away from Jesus. Um, so, so our good works should give light and glory to God the Father. Um, any, anything else to say about light in the, of the world? Now, Jesus is the light of the world, but because he's living in us, then we 
reflect his light, or the light that is within us, out into the world. Uh, not just in good works, but also in our, hopefully in our attitudes, right? We should be happier and jo more joyful and gentler and p more peace, patient and peaceful and kind and gentle, right? Yeah, here it says, words without deeds are like salt that has become useless or like a light put under a basket. Mm -hmm. The words we speak in praise for our Heavenly Father need the support of our deeds. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants us to witness by both words and deeds. Yeah, didn't, yeah. Uh, didn't Luther have a little problem with James's? Well, you're right. Well, particularly because the Catholic theologians leaned on James to uh, faith without works is dead. You know, and Luther says, I mean, that's in a sense, that's true. In a sense, that's true. But you're saved by your faith, first of all. By emphasizing works, people think they can be saved by their works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, and that's officially Catholic doctrine. If you come to Mass, if you say your Hail Marys, if you go to confession, if you are baptized, catechized, you know, married, and, and last rites, unction, you know, if you go through all of the sacraments, you will be saved. Not you know, emphasizing because you've done them, not because of God doing these things through you. Not, not as seeing them as opportunities to have God work in your life, but as opportunities for you to do things for God, right? Yeah. So that, yes. Um, so he didn't, he, he didn't disagree. If you really have faith, you sh should be doing things for your neighbor. You should love your neighbor. You know, not just do things for them, but actually love them, <laughs> care for them, be concerned for them. You know, and, uh, but, but you have to, you have to you know, believe, be saved first, and build on that. Otherwise, you're on a house with no foundation. You know, that's going to crumble, right? Yeah. Sh shift, break, and fall apart. Um, so it starts with faith. Faith, the Holy Spirit, is the light, lights the light within us and shines out of us. Um, okay, so enough of salt and light. This next paragraph, verse 17 to 20, is a little different. Okay. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come to abolish them, but I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Mm -hmm. So fulfilling the law. Uh, let's go ahead and read uh, Linda 19. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Dort. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. Now, what about this? What about this? Jesus did not come to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. And and I think we, the churches, Christian churches, are, are always trying to, trying, there's a, a kind of a, a line here, isn't there? It, but if you just read these verses, it sounds like you have to be a very, really, really good person, don't you? You have to do everything in the law. Yeah. You have to be better than the scribes and the Pharisees, the experts in the law, who like to look really good in public uh, and t remind everybody else how much better they were than everybody else. Um, but what do we know? Um, is this what part of why we have the? This is part of why we have some of the other readings. But we know Jesus fulfilled the law in our place, right? How are we more righteous than the scribes and the Pharisees? Is it because we try harder and work harder? Well, first off... Here's, here's the word, expatology. Okay. 
Matthew yeah. emphasizes that the life and teachings of Jesus fulfill God's plan to reign over his people from heaven. In Jesus, the end times reign of God has come. In Matthew, Jesus mentions the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven 48 times. Mm -hmm. This is the single most important theme of his gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, God's kingdom, in the, from the catechism, when we pray, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom comes among all those who hear, listen to God's will, and do, and do it. Uh, so, but you have to believe God to listen to him. Otherwise, you'd say, ah, the, that's nothing worth listening to. Um, I'm not going to do that. So our, our actions are a demonstration of our faith. You know, not, not, just not because uh, we think we can earn by being good. Um, but, there, but there is a warning to the church here too, because some churches are tempted to say, well, because uh, Jesus came, you can, you're forgiven for whatever you do. There's really no, no sin anymore. Um, you can, you can, you can commit adultery, you can commit murder, you can steal, you can, you can do all these things. You don't have to go to church ever. You don't have to read God's word or listen to him. You know, you can do whatever you want. Um, uh, there's churches today that are basically teach that. Uh, even up to the point that God loves everybody so much that everybody's gonna be saved. Even, even if they don't believe in Jesus, you know, and their lives don't, you know, aren't a demonstration of their faith. Um, but, uh, so there, there's a bit of a balance, because, you know, Jesus fulfills all the law, but, so then we don't relax the, the commandments, but abortion is murder, you should not do that. Adultery, all the forms of adultery outside of marriage of a man and a woman are adultery, and we cannot encourage people to do that. If you are a Christian and you want to please God, then don't do this. Now, if you're a Christian and you fall into temptation and you have a bad day and you, you, know, you lose your temper you, you, or something happens, you know, that can be forgiven. You still have to deal with the consequences, yeah. but, um, but that, that can be forgiven. Jesus fulfilled the law for you, you know, so that you can, so then you can do your best to live it you know, for him. Freely, you know, knowing that you already won the victory, you're already in the kingdom of God. So, um, okay. Did uh, let's see? Did you read all of this sermon? Let's see. That was the Beatitudes. Um, yeah, you've read these. Okay. Um, except for you haven't. Have you read the summary of verses seventeen to twenty yet? Uh, the verses. Uh the scribes and Pharisees read and studied the law and the prophets. They accept the fact that scripture cannot be broken, but they do not believe that Jesus is the fulfillment of scriptures. They seek to achieve righteousness by keeping the law for which they have a high regard. But Jesus goes on to point out just how defective their righteousness really is. Christ takes the law into his hands and explains it spiritually. When judged by the true intent of God's law, our righteousness is likewise defective. Mm -hmm. Only in Christ do we have true righteousness. Yeah. So this passage, talking about some of our fishing things that we've talked about the last few weeks, this is, this is uh, Jesus uh, teaching law or gospel. Well, I think well, particularly with this section about the law and the prophets, he's teaching law, right? Yeah. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you, you know, good luck trying to keep up with them. Because you know, you're either you know, going to end up as self-righteous, or if you're on it, or you're going to see your sin, and despair, and hope. You know, hopefully, you'll turn to God. You know, and cry out, "Lord, have mercy upon me." Um, but uh, 
but living in faith, then we are in the kingdom of God, then we are salt and light in the world um, because of God working in us, living in us. And some days we need to work at it. Some days it's easier because we're just following God, right? Mm -hmm. Some days are easy. Some days <laughs> are hard. Um, okay. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Our, our reading through that section and continuing in for chapter 1. Chapter 2, chapter 2, yeah. chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We finished chapter 1. Christ is our, the wisdom of God, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So let us boast, if anyone boasts, boast in the Lord. Okay. Um, chapter 2. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. What your faith might not rest, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Okay. So we're, he's coming back to this again. We've been talking about this the last couple of weeks, but, um, but uh, his evangelism work, his fishing, was not in the wisdom of men, but he describes it as weakness, fear and trembling. Um, fear and trembling. Uh, the note reminds us there was violent opposition to his message from the Jews in Corinth. Um, Paul was meek, perhaps also recalling the beating, rioting, and indifference he experienced in, on this mission trip, you know, in, other, in other places also. But uh, um, So was he afraid of getting beat up? <laughs> um, was he... Uh, other places, it, it, taught, it seems as if he, he says uh, that people accuse him of writing with strong words, but in, you know, but in person he speaks in weak, you know, weakly. Um, yeah, so, and there's people like that who are, who are very good writers, but are not so interesting to listen to. <laughs> uh, uh, so... Um, you know, maybe Paul was more gifted at writing than in speaking. But he, but so it was the power of the Holy Spirit that it was actually at work in his words, right? Um, and I, I met a guy at seminary from Africa who had a similar kind of story in, in a sense. Uh, he said, he said that he, he was mad at, at this guy, this other guy, because he had started talking to his girlfriend or, Maybe he's even, maybe even stole his girlfriend. So he, he, was, he was, I think he might have even been a Muslim. He was going to beat this guy up. So he waited outside the church for, for this guy to come out. But it, he was hearing what the pastor was saying inside. Now it wasn't a, an exciting speech. It wasn't a revival speech. It wasn't a, you know, get down on your knees and give your heart to Jesus. Uh, he said it was, it was, Sounded weak and mild, but he couldn't help himself going inside, you know, and you know, you know coming to believe in Jesus and forgiving this other guy. He didn't beat him up, <laughs> uh, and and then uh, I don't remember all of the rest of his story. But then he's at St. Louis at the seminary studying to be be a pastor and a professor, you know, in his country, you know, so. Uh, no, but he said it wasn't because the guy was, sounded great and exciting and wi or wise or you know he, you know it was it, just something about the words the Holy Spirit got a hold of him his heart 
through those meek and mild words and brought him yeah, brought him in. He he was caught. <laughs> Hung, hanging out a little too close to the fishing. Uh, so um so well that that's can but that can be it, it, Encouraging for us, right? Because we're kind of meek and mild, and we don't like to be the Jesus Bible bangers. And you know, the Lutherans aren't very good at that, right? But through our good works and through the words of God, we can still be salt and light, and and the Holy Spirit can still bring people to Jesus. You know, so um, yeah, we don't we don't have to have a great story. A, a, a testimony you know, we don't have to have words of wisdom we don't have to have all the the books memorized uh, we can also speak with some weakness and fear and trembling um, but uh, let the Holy Spirit work um, okay well we got a few more verses so going on then uh, Linda start us out verse 6 I th think Right here. Yeah. Yet among the yet among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of his age or of the rulers of his age, who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, nor if they did had they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Yeah. All right. Um, it's it's a deeper wisdom, uh, not you know, not that sounds good in a human sense, or uh, uh, but uh, you know, in not that's popular. Uh, not be the best self. Be your best self. Not you know, uh, make yourself into all you can be. Dream it and go out and get it. If you pray, if you believe and pray, God has to give it to you, but uh, a deeper wisdom. Sometimes uh, we talk, in, in, we kind of compare this a little bit to physics. There's a kind of Newtonian physics. Newtonian physics are uh, things, everything happens in a line and in a reason and time is, you know, uh, is constant. And, you know, it, it's, it's the kind of physics that just makes sense. You know, gravity and friction, and and you your car goes forward. And then there's the then there's the the, uh, um, the fancy crazy kind of physics. You know, black holes in the universe, and and antimatter, and time is not linear, but you know, loop de loops, and you know, and uh, relativity, and and uh, there's there's this other you know then there's a crazy physics that doesn't make sense you know, right so you know there's the wisdom of the of the world that makes sense and God's got that we got the book of Proverbs and so and there, there's wisdom in in God's word you know, but then there's also wisdom that's so far above us that it just sounds like craziness and relativity and time travel right <laughs> um, so. Uh, and Jesus crucified for us is is part of that message. That just why would God save us like this? Um, so um, quantum physics, you know, for if you're trying to help me out there at home, quantum physics. That's the that's the crazy kind of physics. Uh, but uh, um, okay, so. Yeah, when you read in? Yeah, fin go through 12. Okay, but as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. Yeah. This some some of Paul's deep thoughts, yeah. going from Newtonian theology to quantum theology. Uh, <laughs> 
so um, well, Ray, you got this study Bible. What the, kind of a summary does it give? It really doesn't give a summary here <laughs> on this, uh, unless you go to all the way to sixteen. Well, we can do that. Um, that is a that is um, the extended reading. It's not printed on our on our bulleted insert. It does go through sixteen, so we could go ahead and and read that and just tie it together. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is able not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Yeah, we've given up our own minds and it is filled with Christ himself, God himself. Um, and, and so, again, when we're witnessing in the world, you know, <laughs> it doesn't, we don't necessarily go out and talk about communion is the body and blood of Jesus. You know, that's not going to make sense to anybody. You know, you know, that's not what you start with. Uh, you start with Jesus loves you. you know, your life is messed up. God wants to save you from that. God wants to save you from an eternity of messed up <laughs> a life you know, and, and punishment and consequences for it. So then we should sing, what a friend we have. What a friend, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I like that one. We'll, we'll start that at 10, at 1050 every week. week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's have the summary of verses up to 16 is, the message of the cross is simple, but the spiritual wisdom that comes with it touches every area of life and faith. In view of this, we see unbelievers with no compassion as people with no true, spirit, no true spiritual comprehension. The Holy Spirit grants us such understanding only through the gospel. Yeah, and, and especially for people who have basically been in the faith, Christians all of our lives, it really becomes hard to understand sometimes, doesn't it? How did you let yourself get into such a mess? Didn't you notice this? <laughs> the first part when you got into the drugs, when you got, you know, when you, you got, you know, when you couldn't pay off your credit cards, you know, how did you keep going in this mess? You know, and get so deep. Um, I mean, n not that we're, we're not saved by all of those things, but because we, we know God in his ways for us, you know, those other, you know, other things follow. So we don't get ourselves into such deep messes. Although sometimes, the world, you know, happens. You, you, I mean, you're in a car accident, and you, you know, you're in a deep mess, you know, yeah. without, you know, from no fault of your own. But um, that's just part of the. We, we have an instance of that right now with one of our employees who, that was in that wreck. Still over she, a month, yeah. She, she's probably still going to be another month or two months there. Ouch, mm -hmm. you know, and and she was working at the grocery store. Is she getting some sort of workman's compensation or oh, some money? Paying you're, pay, you're paying her out of your own. I don't know how many. You're not, you're not required to pay her, though, right? Uh, because She's been a very good employee. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, yeah, that's a bit of a burden on, on you guys. But well, we did tell her that when you get your settlement, then you have to reimburse us mm -hmm. for... What okay. Oh, well, right. Yeah, and in a, in a human earthly sense, yeah. But then that takes money. Keeps her paying her bills. Yeah, but the, somebody else is paying that. The insurance is paying that, and we all pay insurance. You know, so, but yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, thank you for taking care of her and doing that. And um, so, but. Uh, um, yeah, in our witnessing, you know, in Paul, Paul Paul's witnessing, he, 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 in other place he talks about when you're babies, we like, gave you spiritual milk. And now you're grown up, so you should be, you should be eating spiritual meat now, right? So, so, 
We don't have to just because we just we we can't forget the, the basic theologies. We still drink milk even as adults, but we but we also want to grow into more deeper wisdom and theology too. Um, and then it's hard for us sometimes as as people, as I'm saying, as people who have been living the church and in this wisdom, godly wisdom for so long, sometimes it's hard for us to relate to people outside. But then we just got to get back to love them and do our best. <laughs> just love them. So, um, all right. Deep wisdom, deep thoughts. Then we got, we don't have a lot of time, but we can read through the Old Testament lesson and um, just Isaiah 58. Briefly, how does this relate to, particularly gonna, maybe the gospel, usually uh, more than so, but uh, then the, the epistle, see, we're just reading through Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. So, Isaiah 58, starting verse 3 through 9a. Verse 3 through 9a. Yeah. Um, let's see, Linda, you want to go ahead and read it on here, verse 3. Verse 3? Mm hmm. Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Verse five. Dor, do you wanna? Okay. Is such the fast that I choose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down to his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Is it, a, is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. Okay, yeah, that's where it pauses. So, um, so uh, a little bit more law, huh? You are fasting, and you think you're pleasing God by doing it. But uh, you're not pleasing God by doing it because you're just using it as an excuse to be grumpy <laughs> it, it, your family and your wife and your workers. You know, well, I'm fasting, so you go work in the field, you know, um, and, uh, and to make, try to make yourself look good. But God, what is the purpose of God's fasting? Well, he, do, he does, even in the New Testament, talks about fasting, about taking time, of not eating so that we can do what? Spend more time with God, pray for God, discipline ourselves, have extra food to give away, you know, to people in need. Um, we don't need to buy new clothes all the time, you know, like the world around us, you know, if, um, or throw the clothes out, at least give the clothes to somebody else who could use them. Um, but, uh, Then your light, there's the light of the world, break forth like the dawn. Your healing shall spring up. Your glory shall go before you in the glory of the Lord. So that connects into your light shall shine before men and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Um, 
So uh, don't do don't, you know don't do spiritual good works for, uh, for the wrong reason. Get a little more, a little more law. And there's you know, yeah, people today still need to hear law. It's just a matter of uh, trying to speak it to a way that first off gets them to recognize their own sin and then t helps them to turn to God for forgiveness and, you know, and, the, and teaching and leading and guiding, turn their lives over to God um, from there. All right, good. Uh, was there a little summary? There really is a summary on this one. This one that... Uh, Unless you do the whole chapter, which I, I suppose we could there, the Lord condemns all who draw near to him only with words, and those who seek their own pleasure above all else. Mm -hmm. But for those who share with their neighbors in need, the Lord promises healing. Mm -hmm. We cannot draw near to the Lord in faith while oppressing and quarreling with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Jesus perfectly fulfilled the law of love and would lead us to repent. His cross is the guarantee that the Lord will answer when we call upon Him in faith. Okay, well, that um, uh, it does kind of tie everything together a bit, doesn't it? Light of the world, good works, uh, turn to the Lord. Jesus fulfilled the law, all the law and the prophets, and, um, and the cross, Jesus on the cross is part of that, so... Oh, it does kind of tie all the readings together. Uh, but then again, Jesus always ties all the readings together. <laughs> it's always about him. So, um, good. Then, it's no other... You can, either way, you can leave, turn them, leave them here, take them home. We uh, always have a few extra... Uh, Give so, us opinion, Dorothea. What do you think about uh, soup suppers in uh, nighttime uh, Lenten? What's your thoughts? Yeah, we are going to be talking about that. Um, and in, into March, at least through the time change, it's still going to be dark. You know, earlier. Well, I don't think there's going to be a time change this year, is there? Isn't there? I think there is, isn't there? Oh, is it going to go again? I don't think... The federal government has to approve it. I don't think they've approved uh, their are are stopping the time changes yet. But oh, I thought Washington. Uh, we had voted for it a couple years ago, but but it's a federal time is a federal trade commission. You know, um, well, there's some states that don't. Uh, uh, right. They Arizona being uh, and Indiana. Yeah, there's a couple couple places and more and more places would like to get off of the time change but uh, so one of the options government moves slowly which is oftentimes a good thing but uh, so they they are have discussed even doing a federal it can't you know get rid of the time change you know across the whole country I think the United States might I think be the United States is the only one that does it aren't they might be might be because Canada doesn't do it I don't believe I can't remember. Uh, they've always been on the same time I've been on when I traveled, you know. Well, maybe. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, Europe, most of the world, I don't think does change time change. But I can't uh, even remember whether we're on daylight now or if they want to go to daylight. This is standard time now. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So then, in the summertime, the sun would come up at three, three or four in the morning, instead, you know. And it'd go down at eight or nine o'clock at night, you know. So, but uh, so, but anyways, um, soup suppers and uh, evenings. We, we used to do them what at six o'clock soup supper. I think so. And then seven o'clock uh, service. Right, that's what we did do. Yeah. So you're basically getting out by eight o'clock or so. I don't like driving in the dark, but I don't think it'd be too bad from my house up here. Yeah. That's um, 
we're talking about uh, it's Ash Wednesday starting is uh, is uh, February. Uh, that starts on February 22nd. 22nd. So Ash Wednesday would be what? Seven we days. still got a couple weeks, three weeks, 21 days from now. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, we yeah we need to decide what time we're going to keep doing the afternoon, three o'clock worship service. Um, Soups, four o'clock's a little early for soup supper if we did soup supper after our Lent service, but it, we could do that, or we could shift things, you know, uh, somehow in between, you know, three and seven. Well, I would come if it was at seven. Yeah? I would. Yeah. You would? Yeah, I would. So... I don't, yeah, I don't know about the top side so of it. We've been a couple years now without soup supper. Right. Right, we have. I remember one soup supper, I don't remember what year it was, but we had 40 people. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Especially on an Ash Wednesday or something, mm -hmm. or, 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 uh. But it, it tapered off as, oh, yeah. as Lent drew on, but we had a <laughs> room was full. Yeah. So. Let's um, close in our prayer, and then we can, we can discuss that a little bit further. But uh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together and your word. Help us to, uh, to not just hear your word, but trust it, believe it, and live it in, a, in words and in our deeds also. Our, we may be salt and light to the world around us. Confessing, uh, confessing your cross, as Paul did, and so pray all the. We pray for the Carstensen family uh, with their loss, and uh, for Marilyn and Betty still healing and recovering, and for all of our members. Uh, we thank you for this church here, and we pray you continue to bless us. Pray all these things in Jesus' name and as He taught us. Our okay. Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.